Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of our Terraria modded tutorial series. Today we're going to go ahead and take a look at the global projectile class and how we can create one and how we can use it. So let's just go ahead and get started right away. So I've got my mod file open here already and if you also want a, a quick little tip on how to open your mod correctly, go into your workshop, develop mods, open sources, and open the .sln file or the solution file. And that will open this nice interface here where you can easily go ahead, add items and sift through all of your folders. Okay, awesome. So now I'm gonna go ahead and I already have a global folder which we created the global NPC and item uh, from the previous tutorials. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a new item here. And we're gonna call, we wanna add a C sharp class. Sure, that's perfectly fine. And we'll just get rid of what's, uh, what's here for now. And then, of course, we'll rename this class to our, uh, let's say, global projectile. All right, that should be good. And we'll actually call it global projectiles because I believe global projectile might be a class and we don't want to have the same names. So I'll add an S onto there. Okay, awesome. And just to make our lives a little bit easier, I'm just going to straight up steal this framework from another code file and just paste it there and then get rid of uh, all of the stuff in between. That way we have all of our usings and also our uh, namespaces and class. Okay, awesome. And just for reference, this is the namespace that this folder is in. It's in our global folder uh, in our Riptide mod. And for the class, this is going to be called the global projectiles. And once again, I only have uh, one hand. So forgive me if I'm typing a little bit slowly today. And then global projectile like that and so yeah it's important that we had the s on there because the actual uh global projectile definition is called global projectile so we don't want to have that same name uh for our .cs file you should probably name this something other than global projectiles but i guess you can if you want that's just what i'm naming mine uh, but whatever works for you and now over here we can actually do some really cool stuff so if you're familiar with how projectiles work, uh, which if you aren't, you should watch the projectile video I did uh, a little while ago on 1.4, but essentially you can override the defaults of a projectile. So if we actually go ahead into our projectiles folder, I'll just open up a quick example uh, right here. I don't know why I haven't been doing this earlier, but if I press control and then uh, I can zoom in and out of the code and that can, that's gonna save a lot of editing on my side and also makes it a bit easier for you guys. Uh, so yeah, there you go. But this is one of our projectiles and you can see over here we're overriding the defaults where we can set stuff like the light penetrate value, uh, height, AI style, and even the damage type. You can override the defaults for every single projectile within your global projectile. So it's not just for this one gel yo-yo projectile or that one other random projectile that we saw uh, earlier. This code is run on every single mod projectile. Okay, so this is why it is so powerful, because you can globally change everything. And you might have also noticed, let's go into our gel bullet projectile over here. Uh, I don't know why the code for this is all messed up, but um, that's really weird why it's formatted like that. It must have been a Tmod Porter when it ran. It must have uh, messed things up a little bit. But regardless, you can see over here we have a public override void AI, and this is actually really bugging me So now, so that I'm looking at this. Let me just quickly format that a little bit nicer. Okay, so right over here we have our public override void AI. And we can actually override this in our global projectile, meaning we can override the AI of every single projectile in the game. And that allows us to do so much cool stuff. For example, imagine we had an accessory or something that was like uh, mixed projectiles or melee projectiles, you know, light things on fire or whatever. Well, what if you wanted to show that in a projectile using dust? You'd then have the accessory set a boolean to true, and then within your global projectile, you could just override the AI and say if this boolean is true we'll just create dust on this projectile as it's moving along and that's all you'd have to do in order to make a fire dust trail on every single projectile but there's more you can do with this as well for example you can do things like let's head back into our gel bullet projectile for example you can override the kill command you can override the on hit npc on hit tile you can override all of those methods meaning you can do so much cool stuff like for example maybe you want to change the way a projectile interacts with an npc Maybe you want to add like a, a mega critical hit chance on projectiles that did four times damage instead of two times damage. Well, override the on hit NPC and then say something like uh, if rand main.rand.next is 
0, 100 is greater than 90, so that'd be a 10% chance. Then uh, damage times equals 2, multiply the damage by 2, and there you go. You now have 4 times the damage uh, when you hit an enemy with a projectile with a 10% chance of that actually happening. So there's a bunch of cool stuff you can do here, and it's one of the reasons why uh, I wanted to make this video. But let's go ahead and actually kind of lay out uh, our framework here so we can actually start changing things. So first we want to public override void our set defaults. Now, this right here, let's say for whatever reason, we wanted to set every single projectile in the game to that of a melee projectile. Well, we can just say projectile.damage type, or actually, let's do something that's more obvious. So when we test it out, uh, we can see it a little bit easier. Let's just say projectile.damage equals 5. So this is obviously something that you're never going to want to do. What's going to happen now is that every single projectile in the game is always going to deal exactly 5 damage. And I actually just realized something right now. So let's not override the defaults. That's not going to change the damage of this thing. At least not for everything. Because I'm pretty sure a lot of items calculate their damage a little bit differently when they hit the enemy. So setting it in the defaults might not actually work. Um, because the damage is actually overridden by when you create the projectile or shoot it with an item. So you'd actually have to say public override void AI. So we'll update every single frame. And we'll always set the damage to 5 right here. And it's actually, it might, you might notice it's a little bit different when you call this uh, public override void here than uh, in maybe another projectile or a normal projectile. You can see over here, there's no uh, parameters in, in this. But because we're in a global projectile, uh, we do need to have parameters so we can actually access that specific projectile. Okay, so if we go into our game uh, and reload, which I believe I've already done, let's spawn in some zombies here. And you can see... 53 range damage, okay, but if we try and shoot stuff, all right, we're doing like two to three damage. That's because we just set our projectiles damage to five, and that works for literally everything. Let's let's go crazy here. Let's get a terrarium, and you'll see just uh just how wild this is. So let's spawn in a a zombie real quick. Our terrarium is doing two damage. It should be doing 190. So you can kind of see what you can do with this. It's really really cool. Um. If you want to add dust or whatever, maybe let's let's go steal some dust code that we already have. Uh, yeah, let's why not? Let's just take take whatever this is. This is probably just some random bullet dust that's gonna look awful. The projectile in this is actually lowercase, not uppercase. And for this, we'll just say, what's the dust ID for fire? Dust ID dot fire. Is there a fire? Let's see. Might not be called fire, might be called a uh, torch or something. Yeah, let's just do torch. Okay, nice. And if we build and reload that, we should hopefully see every single projectile in the game have a, a fire trail, which is going to be interesting to watch. So you can see, look, our terrarium is now, uh, now just has fire. And the same for all of our projectiles, even the yo-yos and uh, our banana ring, or I think it's called the bonana ring. Huh. Don't know why I named it that, but uh, you can see literally every single projectile has a fire trail, even the arrows, everything. And you can kind of see just how powerful this is now. Hopefully you're getting some, some context of what you can really do with this. Um, and here's the thing. Let's say you only wanted to affect a certain kind of projectile, like melee projectiles or whatever. Well, that's just a simple if statement, my friend. If, and by the way, if you want more information on this, uh, you can watch the vectors and if statements video that I put up a little bit earlier. Uh, you can just say if projectile dot damage type. I forgot they changed that. You can't just say projectile dot melee anymore. It used to just be um used to be able to just say something like, oh projectile dot melee equals true. But now it's damage type uh, equals 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 damage class dot melee. Okay, and here's actually something interesting uh, that you should probably keep in mind. In an if statement, you have to make sure you're using the equals equal sign. That's because if you only had one equal sign, it would think that you're trying to set projectile.damage equal to damage class.melee. This right here is an assignment operator, but this right here is a comparing operator. It's comparing these two, and if it's equal to it, it'll return one, and it'll run the code that's in the if statement. So if this projectile that we are uh, that's currently alive is indeed a melee projectile we'll have the fire effect on it 
And so now whenever we shot a projectile that was the type of a melee projectile, it would have a fire effect on it. And of course, maybe you wouldn't just do this by itself because that would be maybe just like a nice aesthetic or whatever. Um, but you would probably also want to set the enemy on fire. So what do we do for that? Well, public override void on hit NPC. And now we can put whatever we want in here. We could just say, maybe we can even copy and paste this right here. We can just say, if the projectile is a melee projectile, then what are we going to do? We're going to set it on fire. So we'll say target. And let's add, actually, before we do that, just uh, so you guys understand more what's going on, let's take a look at the parameters in here. We got ourselves a projectile. Okay. And then we have the target. So when we hit the NPC, the target stores the actual enemy that we hit. So we can do things like give it a, a fire debuff or damage it or whatever. And then we have the damage of our projectile, the knockback that we're dealing, and then whether or not this damage we're dealing is a critical strike or not. And so you could just say like crit equals true, and then it would always be uh, like if I just said crit equals true, like just straight up like that, then critical hits would be 100% chance for every single projectile. So let's not do that. But if we have a melee projectile, what do we want to do? Target. So that's the NPC we just hit. Target dot add buff. And we can say buff ID dot on fire. Okay. And then colon, or not colon, uh, comma, the time in, not seconds. This is the time in, I believe, milliseconds, or I should say ticks. So the game runs at 60 frames per second. So we're going to say 60 times three, and that would just be three seconds. So that would add the fire effect. Uh, for three seconds onto enemies when we hit them. So let's go back into our game and let's uh, build and reload once more. Okay, all is well. And we will head back into our game. Now we have to go ahead and find, or actually we have some spears in here from Spear Overhaul. Uh, let's just use those instead. We got ourselves a wooden pike. That should uh, suffice, hopefully. All right. So zombie's going to come at me. You can see... Lights on fire for three seconds. We can count. Okay, nice. And here's another interesting thing. Because the projectile for the spear that's thrown is also melee, uh, you can see the fire effect. And that should also light it on fire when we hit it. Okay, awesome. But, and same thing for the terrarian. These are all melee projectiles. You can even see the projectiles that it releases are also flagged as melee projectiles. So those also get the uh, on fire buff as well. It's very interesting. But, however, if we shoot an arrow, you can see it doesn't have that effect. Because an arrow isn't a melee projectile, it's a ranged projectile. So, effectively, we've just set all of our melee projectiles to have a fire trail, and also set the enemy on fire. And, if you wanted to have, like, an accessory, all you'd say here is say, and, and then, if that boolean that you have for your accessory is set to true or not. So, I don't know if we already have one. We might have one. Uh, do we have one? I'm not sure. Let's go check our accessories. Uh, gel boots. Yes, slime shoes. So we could check to see if we have like our slime shoes on or whatever. It wouldn't make sense in this case, you know, light things on fire if we have our slimy shoes. It doesn't make sense. But you could basically do something like that. You'd have to maybe reformat this a little bit and also make sure you have a uh, player. So you have to say something like, you know, player, player, because remember the player is actually a class. And so we can't just say player dot get my player without actually uh, having a variable that is of type player. So we'd have to say like player player equals main dot maybe local player or something like that and that will then store uh the type player into this player variable here and then if we did that hopefully this will actually work I haven't tested this um and we go back into our game whenever we have our slimy shoes on so whenever we have an accessory equipped only then will our fire trail appear on our projectiles what, what do we call these things the gel boots yeah i already forgot where is it? What was it called? I gotta go back in my code. Gel boots. Slimy shoes, of course. Okay. Kind of a brain lapse there. Okay, so we have our slimy shoes on. So you can see we have our fire trail. Okay, that's all nice and dandy. Let's also get rid of these guys. You saw nothing. Let's just kill those guys real quick. Um, and if we take off our slimy shoes, you should notice now when we use this thing, no fire trail. Oh no. But, oh yes, because that's exactly what we want it to do. So if we use it now, then we have it equipped. Fire trail. Awesome. So what we've just done is now we've just 
said, okay, we only want to do this when we have the success re equipped. And it's as easy as that. It's really not that complicated, but there's still so much you can do with it. So I definitely urge you to mess around with this and just try changing a bunch of the different parameters of the projectiles, overriding all the different methods and hooks, and just kind of exploring and doing a bunch of really weird stuff. Because if you wanted to, you could even change a specific projectile. Let's say you wanted to modify like a vanilla projectile. You could just say, okay, well, I only want this to happen to a singular projectile. Then just say if projectile dot type equals equals uh, projectile ID dot, uh, I don't know, maybe the Arcalis projectile. Maybe you wanted the projectile of the Arcalis to be like some frozen Arcalis or whatever, and it always inflicted frostburn or had some cool particle trail or something. That's how you do that. You just have that if statement. Then the code that's run in here is only run on that specific projectile. And that's going to sum it up for this uh, global projectile here. Uh, I hope you guys learned something new. I definitely think this is a super awesome one for pretty much everyone to know. So thank you everyone for watching this one. If you want to support my work, you can become a patron with the link in the description. And I'm also trying to currently develop my uh, first very large commercial game right now. Uh, and I'm trying to fund a animated trailer for it, which is actually really exciting. So if you want to check out the project and get some more information on it, you can go ahead and join the Discord with the link in the description, or actually check out my main channel where I post videos that I believe to be higher quality uh, all around than the ones on here. So definitely go ahead and check that out if you're interested. But once again, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode.